Okay, in today's lecture, we're going to be looking at some examples of conditionals. So we're going to look at a canonical example to start with, and then we're going to get an overview of the keywords if, else, and l if. And then we're going to look at how they can stack into decision trees. We'll look at some ways you can write them out in one line, and then when you have more complex logic, how you might want to look at nesting them and how those will evaluate. And finally, we're going to sort of mix and match these conditionals with things that we've learned before. Okay, we are back now with our trusty Jupyter Notebook. So let's look at a concrete example of a conditional. So look at this variable. We have taste, and it's equal to the string good. And we have calories, which is becoming the integer 350. Now we can use these in almost an English readable sentence. You know, print the string eat cake if the taste is equal, the double equal sign, to the string good, and the variable calories are less than the integer 300. Else, print order salad, right? So, can Elsa eat a cookie if she walks up, thinks it tastes good, and has 350 calories in it? Nope, because that's too many calories for her variable. It says that it has to be less than 300. So, instead of printing eat cheesecake, we got order salad. Okay, so let's look at all the different keywords that we have and how they might kind of bunch together. So, if, if you remember, is represented by Anna. Now, if calories are less than 300, what do you think is going to happen without anything else specified? Nothing. So we executed the cell. N absolutely nothing came out. However, if it would have if it would have hit the boolean true, we would have got an outcome. So that's one thing to remember is that nothing else happens by default. You have to actually add this else statement, which of course is represented by our mnemonic for Elsa. And in this case, it's not going to validate up here as true. It's going to come out as false. But then it's going to say, if that's false, then do this. And then, of course, we can put the third one together, which is the elf who's sitting in between the two. And if the calories are less than 300, print eat. Else if, kind of in English you'd say if else, but calories are exactly equal to 350, print just this one time. Else, print order salad. Now, the cookie is 350 calories, so what's going to happen? Correct, just this time. So, got away with this one because it's exactly on the dot. Uh, now, let's look at decision trees. So, that was our mnemonic with our, with our kind of dead tree with no leaves on it. Um, we have a couple variables here for Elsa and Anna set to 21 and 17. Now, we're going to find out what fun things Anna is old enough to do. Now, if Anna's age is greater than or equal to 21, print, she can drink and drive. Of course, but not at the same time. Very, very important, you realize it, not at the same time. Else if Anna's age is greater than or equal to 17, and Anna's age is less than or equal to 21, we can print, she can drive, but not drink. So using that and operator, we've now specified that we have to be in between 17 and 21. It has to be inside of that bracket, that range. And else, we can print, she's not old enough to do anything fun. So on a 17, why don't you follow the logic through here and see what's going to happen. All right, well, let's first assign the variables to their respective ages, 21 and 17. And she can drive, but not drink. Man, that's 17 for you. It's a sucky time in your life. All right, let's talk about some simple logic and how we can kind of code these things both in one line or in sort of a more spaced out way. Now, we can, Python can handle tons of conditions, but how you want to write them is important because you have to give your code to other people. You have to read it yourself. So let's look at a couple one line examples. Now, to me, this logic's you know pretty readable. Print kid if else's age is under 13 else print teenager. So what's going to happen? Elsa we just assigned to being 17. She is a teenager. But this one's a little more tricky. So we have two if statements in it. Um, print kid if on his age is less than 13, which we know should print else because it's a teenager. But then teenager if on his age is less than 18, else adult. So what do you think is going to happen? First evaluate here and then there, or there and then there? Take a guess. Teenager, hmm. Okay, let's look at this in a more spaced out way. So we've talked about it before, but Python, of course, is aware of white space. This is what saves us from all those terrible brackets from other programming languages. But the 
important thing is that they represent a sort of nesting that you can't quite see here as well. Now, if you look at this, if Anna's age is less than 18, then if this evaluates true, go into the block here. But if it evaluates as false, just skip that whole block and go down to here. And then once you're in here, you're going to then look at the age to see if it's less than 13 to print kid, else teenager. So take a guess as what this code's going to run before I hit it. Ah, teenager again. OK. So the thing that's important here is that this evaluates in kind of a different order. So Anna's age is less than 18, is now here on the back end. And you can think of this as coming first, not as something that comes first in one line, but as something that's inside of this thing. So the thing at the end is actually the biggest, because it's like, I'm inside of this thing. And you can see that much more clearly down here. But over time, as you, you learn to program, you'll see it kind of compressed into one line more, because people are starting to save time and kind of type more advanced. But at, at the beginning, think of it like this until you've got it kind of in your head how it works. Um, now imagine this. Two-Face has captured Batman, and he happened to come in. I don't know why he's you know, at the bake sale or, or with frozen guys or whatever, but here he is. And he says to Elsa and the elf and Anna, hey, I've got Batman here. But there's a chance he could survive, because I'm going to flip this coin. And it follows this very special logic. If not true, print Batman dies. Else print Batman lives. What do you guys think is going to happen when Two-Face flips the coin? Batman lives. Of course he does. He's Batman. Let's talk about why. So if not true is kind of a weird statement. Now, let's just look at if true. Hate to do this to you, Batman, but now you're dead. OK, so if true is the Boolean answer we would have got if on his age is less than 18. We would have actually got back from just this chunk of code there, either a true or a false. But you can see you can actually skip the processing step and just type it right in. So if true, do this. If false, do this. And then the kind of the trickiest one, and you just sort of got to think about this for a second and make sure you know it. If not true, you know, that's false. Why not just write false? Because it's wordy. You should, but just no. If not, if not true is the same as false. And that's why you end up with Batman living. OK, last thing. Let's go look at a few ways we can sort of mix and match these things together. So uh, a reminder that we have the taste set to good and the calories to 350. Now, what's going to happen here? Print eat if taste is good and calories are less than 300, else order a salad. Calories are 350. Order salad. Right. All right. Now, how about this? What if we, what if Elsa says, hey, you know, I know there's 350 calories in there, but I'm going to exercise right after this, and that, that's going to burn 200. So now let me see if I can eat this piece of cheesecake. And you can see that we're actually doing the math here. It's in the parentheses. So it should be executing first, and then it's going to go and do the rest of this statement. So what do you think we're going to get? Ah, she gets to eat the cheesecake, even though it's over calories, because she burned some off. All right, and now finally, I want to just talk about what we do when with the operator for memberships is added. So now the taste isn't good anymore. The taste is awesome. But the calories have dropped, so it should be edible. What's going to happen here? Print eat if the taste is in the list with items, awesome, delightful, and delicious, and the calories are less than 300. Else, order salad. Awesome. Is it in the list? Yes, it is. Nice. So awesome is right there. But if it was good, that would be no good, because then you would have to order salad. Thanks for watching another video. I will see you next time. Remember, be smart, be creative, and be syntactically observant. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.